One of the biggest reveals from the GameStop Monday video that was released yesterday for MLB The Show 19 was the addition of a brand new set of cards called the Signature Series cards. There wasn't a ton of information that was given in the GameStop Monday, but there was a blog post that came out at the same time that gave us a little bit more details about what this series of card is going to bring. This announcement caught a lot of people off guard. A lot of people are kind of hesitant and skeptical on it because they feel like it might be going back to what immortals were trying to be and there's just a lot of controversy over it in the community right now but what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna go over this blog post I'm gonna talk about everything we know so far about these signature series players and I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys my opinions on it as well but if you guys are excited for MLB the show 19 and you want to keep up with the news and the information as it comes out make sure to subscribe to the channel I'm covering everything this is the place to be but anyway let's start talking about these cards so first off let's go ahead and see the clip from the GameStop Monday that Ramon talked about about these cards. Diamond Dynasty's next reveal is a big one. The Signature Series. Rare and powerful. Get ready to hunt down these autographs. All-time great such as Willie Mays. So like I said yesterday when I was breaking down this GameStop Monday video, if you want to go check out that video, go check out the previous one on my channel, but there really isn't a ton for us to go off of off that little clip. All Ramon says is get ready to hunt down these autographs. These cards are rare and powerful and, you know, with some of the all-time greats like Willie Mays. Now, a lot of people heard this and a lot of people instantly jumped to the conclusion. It's like, wait, these are a signature series of cards. Are these just going to be like a Immortals 2.0 or only the all-time greats gonna have a signature series so a lot of people were kind of up in arms about that but there was a blog post on the show nation that came out in addition to this video and it's pretty much all dedicated to the signature series players now it doesn't tell us absolutely everything there is some information that's gonna be revealed on the Thursday live stream but they did give us kind of a little bit of a basic look at what these signature series cards are gonna be if you would like to go check out this article Article or this blog post the link to it will be in the description but I'm gonna go ahead and break it down and cover everything that this article is talking about so let's get into it so it starts off saying this you may have just watched the GameStop Monday video revealing the new signature series in Diamond Dynasty if you haven't seen it yet watch the video here there is a lot to unpack about the signature series legends and flashbacks we want to say a few things now and a lot more during our March 14th live stream at 6 p.m. Eastern 3 p.m. Pacific on our twitch channel so one thing right there there. This is not all the information on these cards. If you have an opinion, if you're skeptical about them, that's okay. But I would say hold off on making your complete opinion until after the March 14th live stream. I'm skeptical about these two, but I'm not going to say I like or dislike these cards until I see everything that they are in detail. But anyway, the basics. If a player has a signature series card in MLB The Show 19, it will be a visual sign that this is his best version in Diamond Dynasty. Most most, not all, of these signature series players will be rated 99 overall and there will be a lot of them. Alright, so off the basics, I think a lot of people already are going to think that these cards are a certain idea. When it says most of these cards will be rated 99 overall, I think a lot of people are going to go ahead and lean towards them being more towards Immortals. Because Immortals were 99 overall and they were kind of just in their own little bubble. There were no 99 overall cards. There were a couple 98 that came out with the show's finest there were some 97s in the game like Frank Thomas and then of course some more finest cards but the immortals were a tier of their own it does say there will be a lot of them so hopefully that means I'll be able to choose a lot for lineup diversity and things along those lines but you know MLB The Show usually has cards that they expect to be good that don't end up translating well to the game. Like Jackie Robinson is, you look at his card in MLB The Show uh, 18, he looks like an amazing card, but he lacks the most important attribute in the game, which is power. He's basically unusable. So even if there is a lot of them, they really all have to be pretty high in value. But another thing to take away that I think is actually a good thing, if it's going to be kind of what I'm envisioning here, it says it 
it will be a visual sign that this is his best version in Diamond Dynasty. If it's just a visual sign, then I'm totally okay with that. So for example, if Vladimir Guerrero, if we're just going off single season cards this year, if there's no Immortals in the game, um, Vladimir Guerrero, his best year would probably be 2004 when he won an MVP with the Angels. Is he going to get a Signature Series 2004 card? Or is he just still going to get a hardware card for 2004 and then his signature series is something else? I don't know. But if it's just a visual sign, then I think that's okay as long as we're still going off the single season cards. Okay, on to the next part, depth. We focused on adding depth and breadth, I don't even know what that means, at the highest levels of each position by removing the Immortals barrier that existed last year. Let's use third baseman as an example. In 18, only Chipper and George Brett received Immortal status, while other legends and flashbacks like Mike Schmidt, Miguel Cabrera, or Wade Boggs never quite made it to their level. In 19, expect way more names at third base to be in the top tier discussion and possibly in other series beyond Signature, so monthly awards and finest. Okay, so more more cards uh, at each position in the top tier discussion, that's okay with me, you know. I would much rather have the debate of would I rather start Chipper or would I rather start George Brett or, you know, Schmidt or Jose Ramirez or whoever than, you know, just being like, well, I have to start Chipper because he's by far and away the best card in the game at that position. That's good. I mean, lineup diversity is always going to be good. It's always going to help the game. It's always going to keep it, you know, fresh. You know, you're going to see different lineups, which should be a good thing as long as these work in the way that they're intended to work but I mean even some immortal cards like when they said only chipper and George Brett received the immortal status George Brett really wasn't that good he was an immortal it was he was fine he had good fielding he could play secondary positions he had some speed he had really good contact but once again he didn't really have a lot of power and chipper Jones did chipper was a way better card to have in your lineup than George Brett number one because he's a switch hitter and number two he could also play secondary positions as well so you know there's still even though George Brett was an immortal there was still a clear cut who's the best third baseman so I hope that this year that discussion they're talking about will actually be there next Next up, we've got defensive flexibility. Some of these signature series cards have multiple secondary positions, which means your perfect lineup will be very different than someone else's squad. Secondary positions are always kind of something interesting for me because I always look at them whenever I'm looking at a card that I want to take or want to get. You know, Babe Ruth is a left fielder, but he was my starting first baseman all year. Albert Pujols is a first baseman, but he was my starting third baseman. And you know, if they have those secondary positions, if they can actually play it, then that you gotta put it on there, that's fair. But going off the last thing, and they were talking about having all these different cards at each position to be in the top tier discussion, if there is a third baseman, let's say Mike Schmidt, who has a better bat and a better glove than a lot of the shortstops in the game, Mike Schmidt is probably going to have shortstop as a secondary. Doesn't that kind of take away the shortstop value because you just want to throw Mike Schmidt in there as short? Like, these cards have to be equal in value at the top, you know, to actually be considered the best there. Now, this doesn't say all of the signature series cards have a bunch of secondary positions. It says some of them, and, you know, some of them might only have one. You know, somebody who's an outfielder might only have left and right field if they're a center fielder as secondaries. And, you know, that's just normal. But I'm talking about the guys like Babe Ruth who can play first, Pujols who can play third, Chipper who could play short, guys along those lines. It'll be interesting to see how the defensive flexibility goes into those cards when they're talking about lineup diversity. Next section, many paths to rewards. Signature series players are going to be scattered strategically throughout Diamond Dynasty. They will be accessible as rewards for skilled players, and we have different but equally good rewards positioned for gamers who put the time in. Some signature series will be available at launch, with many more dropping within the first few weeks and months. We'll talk about uh, how and where you can acquire signature series players during the March 14th stream. So the first thing that caught my eye in this section was when they said they will be rewards for skilled players and then they will have different but equally good rewards position for gamers who put the time in. That's totally okay. You know, if you want to give the people who are good at the game, you know, an opportunity to get these cards uh, and then uh, people who put a lot of time in to an opportunity to get these cards, that's fine with me, you know, cater to both sides. But... The different but equal part is a little bit sketchy to me on that. Like we were talking about earlier, Chipper and George Brett, technically, you know, in on paper, they should kind of be like equally good because they're both immortal third basemen. But Chipper was still, you know, by far the better card to use. So I want to know what they mean by different but equally good. Is it different but equally good in terms of attributes? Or is it different but equally good in terms of other ways? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. That part, I 
you know, I want to make an opinion on it, but like I said, I'm going to wait until the stream. The other thing to take away from this is it's talking about some of these players will be available at launch with many more dropping later on in the game. I really don't want a lot of these cards in the game at launch. I really don't. I don't want to have 99 overalls, uh, you know, a, a hefty amount of them in the game right when it comes out because once again, if a 99 overall shortstop is in the game on day one, why would I go for any other shortstop in the game? Like, yeah, I have to get some shortstops to get collections done, whatever, but I'm not ever going to use that card if I have access to that 99. So things along those lines always kind of make me a little bit skeptical, but once again, we'll have to wait and see. Once they reveal kind of their plan of dropping these, then we might get a little bit of a better idea. So the last two sections of this blog post says what you won't see. You won't be required to do mega exchanges, stack grinds for 500 home runs, or absurd moment challenges challenges to earn a signature series player. And then it says tough and exciting choices ahead. If you think the special edition diamond choice pack to pick one of 30 diamond legends or flashbacks is a tough decision, wait until you see what we have in store for signature series. So, you know, I, I, I don't think anybody is going to complain at the fact that there's no more exchanges and there's, you know, no more crazy big, you know, home run or stat grinds. I don't think anybody's going to complain about that. That's all good to me. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have any issue with that section. And then the tough and exciting choices. Um, the only thing I'm really taking away from that is that we're maybe not going to be able to get every signature series player in the game. I don't know if any of these are going to be sellable or if they're going to be, you know, just in choice packs that are different. I'm not sure, but if it's saying that we're going to have a tough choice, then it doesn't seem like we'll be able to get all of them. I don't know, that's just kind of the vibe I get from that. But that's pretty much everything we know so far about the Signature Series. Like I said, I am still a little bit skeptical, but I'm going to wait until the stream to make my full opinion. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Are you nervous for these Signature Series? Do you think they sound cool? Let me know your thoughts down there. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Subscribe to the channel once again if you want to know everything about 19. We're almost at 60,000 subscribers. Let's hit that before launch. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.